Good morning, family. We are so excited that you are joining us this morning for worship. We love you and we miss you. Let's just take a moment to think about what God has done for us, how he is protecting us, how he is keeping us, how he is sheltering us, how he loves us. He is worthy of praise. He is worthy of glory. He is worthy of honor. God, we thank you, God. We praise you, God. We lift your name on high, God. You are worthy. There is none like you, Lord. We honor you. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness, God. There is none like you, and we love you. We thank you, God. You are worthy. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Our God is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. Even from your couches in your living rooms, he is still worthy of our praise. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for the opportunity to gather with one another, even if it is digitally. God, we thank you that you are looking out for us, that you are watching over us, that nothing that's going on right now is taking you by surprise. God, we thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for this time that we have to study your word, to learn more of you, God, to lean and depend and trust in you, God. We pray that as your word goes forth, you would speak to our hearts, that we would see a soul saved and a heart changed, God, that we would be drawn to you, that our heart's desire would be to obey you, to follow you, to trust you, God, because you are worthy, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, we're going to start off by giving thanks to the Lord.
will proclaim that he is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Jesus, there is healing in Jesus. 
pieces in Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.
let's hear from the Lord this morning. Let's pray. Eternal Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, we come once again to first and foremost to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for another day of life, another opportunity to come into your house of worship and to hear your word. Father God, we pray right now that you forgive us of all our sins. Continue to wash us in the blood of the Lamb and the cleanses of all unrighteousness. Father God, we're so grateful right now for this time that you placed in front of us. Father God, I pray right now that you'll use me for your glory, that you'll hide me behind the cross, that they don't see me but only you. Father God, that your word will go forth with power and clarity, and it'll touch someone, Lord, and their life won't be the same as before they heard the word. We be careful to continue to give you the praise and the honor and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm glad you're able to go ahead and sign online this morning in order for us to go ahead and share God's word today. And during this time of the pandemic, I know that a lot of us are in a position where we feel like we are locked up in our homes and we're not able to get out and exercise like we normally do. You know, the other day I saw uh, some people walking the dog and then I saw some people with the dog walking them. You know, they had no control over it, but they were out there getting their exercise. And, and you know, during this time, I know we've had a lot of time to sit at home and to think and, 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 and a lot of times we have a lot of idle time. I remember mama used to say the idle mind is the devil's workshop. And with that being said, I would think that it would be a good time for us to get closer to God. And today I, I, I want to, to speak to you about the importance of exercising our faith. You know, exercising our bodies are, are, are good, it is productive, but you know, that only goes so far and that's temporary. But I, I submit to you that, that right now will be a great time to exercise your faith. If you have your Bibles with you or your electronic devices, turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number one. I would say, say amen when you get there, but I won't be able to hear you, so at your leisure. This is a, a scripture that I know a lot of us know by heart. And the, and the word of God said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Say that again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now when you look at that scripture, it, it, it's, it, it jumps out to me. It says what faith is. It, it uses the word substance. So I looked at that word a little bit closer in the Greek and it translated to hypostasis, which means to stand under. Now, when we think about standing under something, it would be kind of like an umbrella. When you get under the umbrella and it shelters you from the rain and in inclement weather and you don't get wet, but it's still raining now. Don't get me wrong, it's still raining, but you're being covered. And it's the same thing of this stuff. It's like the, the reality of what you're actually hoping for. It says, substance of the things hoped for. Now, hope is our faith directed toward the future. So it's more than just being directed toward the future. It's like a firm expectation that God will perform all that he has promised through Jesus Christ. Amen? And then we look at evidence. Now, I like this one, evidence. If you've ever watched Perry Mason, you know, I never see so many people give themselves up other than Perry Mason. But what I do like is that he will come up with some sort of evidence during that trial. Now, when we speak about evidence and it says evidence of things not seen, it reminds me of uh, when my wife was pregnant with my first child and she came and told me, you know, we, we're going to have a, a baby. And I, I was excited, she was excited because we really went through a lot, you know, getting to that point. It was a 12-year period where we went back and forth. But when she said she was pregnant, I was so elated. But still, I couldn't, I couldn't see nothing. I mean, she, she just told me she was pregnant, and I believed her. But, you know, after a certain period of time, I, I could see that her, her stomach started to swell. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's evidence. 
Still didn't see no baby now. But but I did see her stomach swelling. And then I can remember when, at the movies, and um, there was a movie called Glory with Denzel Washington in it. And I can never forget this because we were in the movies and she was pregnant with our first daughter. And that movie is a very loud movie because it's a lot of war scenes and a lot of explosions. And Taryn got to kick it up in that movie theater. <laughs> I mean, she was like, let me up out of here. But that was a further piece of evidence that she was about to give birth to a child. And so when we talk about evidence, I, I, I think that there's been evidence in our life. If you look back over your life, you will see there's been times that God has done things and you know it was God. Now, you know I'm talking about something when you know that it's just God. That's the only way that it could have been done. It was only God. And if you think about how many times he's brought you through and it was only God, those are, are evidences that you can look back to when we get in a situation in the future where we need to employ our faith. So faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But now, I want to say this to you. Faith is like a muscle. And when I say it's like a muscle, in other words, remember I said initially that a lot of people are stuck up in the house and they want to exercise and they want to get out and they tired of sitting around. Well, has anyone here ever had a cast on, maybe on their arm, or on their leg? I remember when I was in the Marine Corps and I had torn a couple of tendons in my right ankle and they had placed the cast on my, my, my leg all the way up to my knee. And I can remember so vividly that there's nothing like an itch that's when you got a cast on your leg or something. But, but, but what happened is that when they took the cast off, I, I looked at my leg and it was so small. It was shriveled all up and the muscle, the cast looked like it didn't exist anymore. And that was because I didn't put any weight on that leg and I wasn't using that muscle. And, and faith is just like a muscle. When, when you exercise your faith, then you strengthen your faith, okay? So it's like if you, if you take a weight and you pick it up and it's heavy, that's called uh, the resistance. And that's, that's actually testing the muscle to see how strong it is. And as you begin to do those reps over and over and over, and then maybe you come back the next day and it's a little bit easier, and then the next day it's a little bit easier, what you're doing is that you're developing that muscle. And our faith is the same thing. We must exercise our faith. So I'm going to go over three, three points to, to really show you the importance, the importance of exercising your faith. Uh, the first, I want to ask you a question. Well, why, why do we exercise our faith? You know, why is that important that we exercise our faith? Turn with me in your Bibles to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And what we're going to do here is, is speak to why it's important to exercise our faith. Starting with verse number two. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when, you, when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is an unsettled, as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Now, that's pretty clear cut. Basically, what James is talking about is that when you run into a trial, when something comes into your life, that seems like, oh, what am I going to do? 
I, I know, oh, I'm just the only one that has this issue. That's, that's a test. That's working out your faith. Now you're in the gym. You're at home right now, you are in the gym. Think about you're not being quarantined, but you're in the gym. There's things that are going on in your lives right now that is testing your faith. It may be that you haven't been home that much, brothers, with your wives because you've been at work, and now you're getting on her last nerve, and worse than that, you didn't got on her first nerve. And so now your, your, your faith is being tested, and you're being tried. And so here's the time where we need to begin to exercise our faith. Now, when James talks about the fact that the trying or the testing on your faith will work endurance, why is endurance important? Because you have to be able to go through something to get the blessing. Because many times, the blessing is on the other side of through. But if you don't endure through the test, and you don't get to the end of the test, you don't get the reward. You know, many times in the Bible, you hear him talking about, Jesus will talk about uh, the one that endures to the end, and the one that runs the full race. And this is what we're talking about when, you're, when your faith is being tested. You have to understand that it's important for you to grow your endurance. So what, I, what I'm saying is this. Right now, instead of looking at yourself as being locked up in your home through this pandemic, look at it as an opportunity to grow closer to your spouse. Look at it as an opportunity to go closer to God. Look at it as an opportunity to go deeper into his word. Look at it as an opportunity to be able to pray more. You know, we had all these excuses before because we had to go to work, we had to do this, we had to do that. What's the excuse now? I got to watch my TV show, or I got to play, uh, what's the game y'all play? You know, with all the, I can't even do all the controls. Yeah, uh, the Xbox or whatever it is. I got to play that for five hours. I mean, really, what's the excuse now? You know, right now we have an opportunity that God has given us to really get closer to him. So, so during this, this pandemic that we're going through, we have to understand that there's no accidents. This didn't surprise God, like uh, the preacher said last week. It was not a surprise. But now the question is, are you going to do something to surprise God? No! You can't surprise God. Maybe you can surprise yourself. By getting into that word. So we have to exercise our faith in order for our faith to continue to grow and get stronger. Because if you don't have any tests, you never get a test. If your faith is never tested, then really, are, 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 we, are we really Christians? What, what the pastor say? Better check my ID. I mean, if you don't ever have no issues, it's all good, everything's lovely, it's rose-colored glasses, and everything's beautiful. Anybody out there got a life going on like that? I need to know because mine is not like that. Okay? So, so, so remember this. By the trying of your faith, it should work some patience. Now, the patience part is, 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 is really an action word. I don't want you to think patience means just to wait around. Patience means that now you do need to wait, but you have to do something while you're waiting. There needs to be some sort of action in your life. Now, you might be saying, well, preacher, what can I do? I, I can't go nowhere. You know, they tell me I can't even go to church now. Okay, well, the church is in you. The church is in you. So don't make that an excuse to say that you can't worship because you can't come up to the sanctuary. That's, that's just an excuse, and God knows that. Amen? So number one, the reason we must exercise our faith is to get endurance to grow our faith, to be able to endure the pressures of this world, to be able to endure the pressures of these people that backbite you, to be, to be able to endure that person that you can't stand. Now, how do we exercise our faith? I, I heard you preachers say we need to exercise it. I heard you say that we, we need to pray. I heard you say all these other things. But seriously, how do we exercise our faith? It's kind of like, like the first day I went into the gym, I didn't know what to do. I saw all the weights. <laughs> i never forget it. I saw all the, the different machines. And, and I was like, wow. 
And then I saw this one guy, he was cut up, he was ripped, and I was like, yeah, I want to get like that. But I didn't know what to do. So it, it's important that when you get in the gym, <laughs> you need to have a plan. You need to know how to work out. So what we're going to do right now is understand that how you exercise your faith. The first thing you do is read God's word. That's the first thing you do. You might say, well, I read his word. Well, if you're reading it, are you studying it? Turn to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Because this is going to really expound on why we need to read God's word. Romans chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse number 13. You guys there? And the word of God says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how can anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of a messenger who brings good news. But not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ, hearing the word of God. So when you begin to read his word, let me, let me tell you what happens. When you begin to read his word on a daily basis, what happens is you get in his word and then his word gets in you. So when his word gets into you, then, then what happens is that will begin to build your faith because you're putting God in you. And when you put God in you, then you can't help but to have faith in him because now you're having a relationship with him. Um, when, when you read his word, God communicates to you through his word. He communicates to you through his word. So when you are hearing the word of God, you are hearing God's voice. And as you begin to listen to God's voice, he will begin to build your faith. Now, another thing that you can do is you can pray daily to build your faith. And you'll say, oh yeah, yeah, I pray. The Lord lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I die before I wait. Pray the Lord my soul to say, amen. Oh, y'all turn that TV on. No, 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 no. Praying is communicating with God. In other words, when you have communication, that is a two-way street. In other words, it's not just me getting on my knees, saying thank you, thank you, gimme, 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 and now I'm finished. No, 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 no. God will speak to you in prayer. And you say, what do you mean? Is he going to be in an audible voice? I can't answer that question. But I can tell you this. If you speak to him and you build an intimate relationship with him and you speak to him every day, let, let, let me just make it simple to you. How many of you out there are married or got a girlfriend or a loved one? Check this out. What do you think your relationship would be like with your wife if you only spoke to her once a week? Just on Saturday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you don't say nothing to her. You come in the house, you eat your dinner, you don't say hi, you don't say nothing. But then Saturday you wake up, oh, I love you, I've been loving you, and you're just all over her. She would look at you like, what is wrong with you? And the same thing to you, young ladies, is if you never spoke to your husband, but once a week, what kind of relationship would that be? Or better yet, imagine if you only spoke with your spouse just once a month. Once a month. And, and, and that'll be on the first of the month, okay? So first of the month, you, you, you talk to him, you have a long conversation, you talk to him, and you guys really get intimate as far as communicating. But then you don't talk to that person for 29 more days. What kind of relationship do you think you would have? So it's the same thing when we speak with our, about our Heavenly Father. 
We only talk to him once a week when we come into the sanctuary on Sunday, but we expect to have an intimate relationship with him. We only read his word once a week when we come into the sanctuary, but we expect to have an intimate relationship with him. We expect our faith to grow when we only go to the gym once a month. What kind of workout plan would you have if you went to the gym once a month? What do you think you would get from that? So we got to understand that if we want our faith to continue to grow in a positive way and we want to get closer to Christ, then we have to begin to exercise our faith and we, we, we have to do more than just talk about it. We got to be about it. You know, when we talk about praying and speaking to God, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Now what that means is we should be in a continuous state of prayer, meaning that we do it in a reoccurring way. So we don't just pray once a week and think that's going to carry us through and then our relationship with God is going to continue to grow because we spoke to him on Monday and now we don't speak to him again until Sunday. It says pray without ceasing. Be in a, be in a state of prayer. Let, let, me, let me say it like this. When you're in a state of prayer, then what you are doing is you're more receptive to hearing from God. Because when you communicate and pray, it's not just a one-way street. God will speak to you and as you speak to him. And so when we begin to pray without ceasing, you'll be in a situation and God will start talking to you and you'll be saying, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. You ever been in a situation where you just speak to you and you just know it's God and you don't care who around you? And you just say, thank you, Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. Now, what are the benefits of, of faith? I mean, how do we benefit from having our faith built? Well, number one, we begin to have the endurance that we speak about. So when you ever been in a situation where you say, oh, I, I see you coming. Somebody just coming with some mess and you see it way down the street. It, it, the Holy Spirit get like that in you. It'll be a situation where your faith has been built up to the endurance to where when they bring that mess to you and they try to sidetrack you, they say, man, I've been through that. <laughs> you got to come with something else. You, you ever had that one? I, I've been through that two or three times. You say, you got you to try something new. You know, now, don't get me wrong. He will try something new, okay? But the point of the matter is that as you begin to build your faith and you begin to get your faith protect, perfected in, in the fact that you pass the test, because it's like when you get a test in high school and you get the test and you get a 45 and you fail, well, you can't get on to the next, next lesson until you get that one right. So many times we'll be thinking about why I keep going through the same thing over and over and over. Because you haven't passed the test. Well, maybe you need to ask God, what, Lord, Lord God, what would you have me to do? What is it that I'm doing wrong? Lord God, show me what I need to do. Instead of why is this happening to me and woe is me, and here I go again, and come on now. We know we, we've given ourselves pity parties with the cake and the candles and the ice cream too. And all I'm saying is that when that happens, we need to ask different questions. Other than why do I keep going through this over and over again? Well, maybe you ain't got it the first time. Because God, he'll give you a, a remedial test. He'll send you back through the same thing over and over and over until you get it. And that's what it was talking about in James, that your faith will be perfected. In other words, as you endure and you go through this test that God has given you, then you can move on to the next one. That's what we're talking about. Now, the benefits of faith. Hope. That's the benefits of faith. Turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. What's the benefit of faith? Why is hope a, a, a benefit? I mean, hope is... What is it? Well, we talked about it in the beginning what hope is. I mean, when you, when you, talk, about, when you talk about that, you, you're looking for something and an expectation of something in the future. Okay? So Romans chapter 5, the Word of God says, starting with verse number 1, and this is from the NLT, New Living Translation. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace. Ooh, that's a good piece right there. Let me read that again. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace 
with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Wow. The second, the second verse, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. And if anyone ever heard me pray, you know at the end of the prayer I always say, never try to steal God's glory. You see it says right there that we'll be looking forward to sharing his glory. That's, that's a hope we have in our future. And, and the great thing about that is that when God gives us a promise, he never goes back on his word. You know, he's not an Indian giver. When he say something, you can take that to the bank, okay? If you ain't got no bank account, put it in your pocket, okay? If you ain't got no pocket, put it in your pipe and smoke it. All I'm telling you is that when he tell you something, it's going to come to pass, amen? So, so that, that's the first thing. Benefits of faith is the fact that we have hope. And on top of the hope, we have peace. See, when you all miscombobulated because you're worried about something, you ever felt that way you can't go to sleep at night? And you just ain't got no peace. Because you're still thinking about it. Now look, you know, already prayed about it, right? You got down on your knees, you've been slobbering and praying and crying, Lord God, oh, please help me. And then you get in your bed and you can't go to sleep. Did you give it to the Lord? I mean, did you really give it to the Lord? Because you should be able to go to sleep. Like, many times my wife tells me, she say, man, you go to sleep fast. You know when it says eyewitness news in 60 seconds? Okay, before it come on, I'm asleep. And I count that as a blessing. That I can lay my head down, hit the pillow, and be asleep in 60 seconds. And when I'm saying it, that's peace, y'all. And that's what we live for. You can have all the money in the world, but when you can't lay down and go to sleep, what kind of peace do you really have? And so that's another benefit of faith. You know, here's the thing. In order for us to get to the point where we know that our faith has been exercised, what will happen is that you'll have some evidence that your faith has been growing. Turn to James chapter 2. Before we tie this up right here. James chapter 2. Yeah, we're going to bring it on home now. So how do we know? Turn to James chapter 2 and look at verse number 14. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it in your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Wow. James wasn't playing. He, he just said it right there. Basically what he's saying is that when you live your life faithful to God, then your works will come out. So the deeds will show. So let's not twist it here. It's not saying because you do good deeds that that's going to build your faith. The good deeds should come from your faith. And so what he said is faith without works is dead. A perfect example is, you know, when you walk out the store and that person standing there uh, saying, can you give me a dollar? Could you help me out? And, and the Spirit of the Lord said, give it to him, give it to him. And you said, no, I'm not going to give it to him because he's probably going to go buy some drugs. Well, see, no, 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 no. 
The Spirit of the Lord told you to give him the money. He didn't tell you to worry about what he was going to do with it. Your faith should be that you, so you, you're doing what the Lord told you to do, and your faith should say he's he going to get the burger if he, he said he's going to get the burger. If he ain't going to get the burger, don't worry about it. And so this is what I'm talking about, action. And we all know I've done it too. I mean, it happened to me the other day. I came out of Walmart, gave somebody $5, and then I went to the gas station, and somebody came and asked me, I'm like, I can't have, and I said, give him some money. Now, I just gave somebody 20 minutes ago $5, and I ain't working. And then the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, told me to give this person some money. And I didn't want to give it to him. my wife. <laughs> my wife told me to give him the money. She, no, she didn't. She didn't say that. She said, let me see what I can do. And she wanted to go on her purse. And so she said, T, you got some change. <laughs> and so I just gave it to him. But the, the bottom line was, the Spirit of the Lord told me to give it to him. I didn't want to give it to him personally. I mean, I'm just being real. You know, come on, y'all. Y'all, let's be real. You do it sometimes, you be like, Lord, I really didn't want to do it. But you told me to, so I, I'm going to do it. So, so these are the things, and that's just a small example of, of being able to understand that faith without works is dead. I mean, the works that your faith should produce is loving your brothers and sisters. That's what the work should be. You should be able to be able to go to that brother or that sister that you really don't like that much and give them a hug and ask them what you can do for them. That should be one of the works that comes from your faith. So we got to understand when we talk about faith without works is dead, that's what the Bible says. What am I saying then? The reality is this. Is this. Anytime that we try to live our lives by saying we have faith, without having any type of work behind it and not being grateful for what God has already given us because we have to understand God has already given us something. He gave us his son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died on Calvary. He gave us uh, peace. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us all the things that we need to exercise our faith. So I want to say in closing as we move forward this week, we want to be in a position to where we're not only talking about our faith, but we're exercising our faith. Guys, we're in a gym right now. This pandemic is a gym. You know, all we gotta do is get to work. You know, we got the weights right there in us. Your weight might be your little, your little boy or your little girl. Your, your weight might be your husband or your wife. Your, your weight might be the fact that you can't stay out the kitchen eating every five minutes because the refrigerator right there. You know what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, it might be ice cream. I mean, it could be, it could be anything, but you've got to find a way to work through this. And I submit to you that if we get into his word, if we pray, if we, if we do the things that the word of God tells us to do, we will begin to grow our faith. And as we grow our faith, we will begin to get endurance and we'll be able to get through these things. Right now, we, we have to endure this thing. We might be in this for two or three more months. What are we going to do then? We can't get no divorce. Why are you getting divorced because of the pandemic? How are you going to tell the judge you're getting divorced because you had the pandemic? You can't be around your kids no more. So, so this is what I need you to do. I submit to you, before we, before we leave here, I'm going to give you a, a challenge. Here's the challenge. Since you're at home and you, and you got nothing to do, you got all this time. Every time that you decide you want to eat something, Every time you go to that refrigerator, it might be the eighth or ninth time you went there, whatever you take out of there, before you put that in your mouth, say a prayer. Every time you get ready to put something in your mouth, I don't mean say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about say a prayer. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, say a prayer. Okay, now, when you want to take it to the next level, every time you decide you're getting ready to eat something, read a scripture. Before you put it in your mouth, take out your word and read the scripture. It ain't that hard. Come on, you know, why would you do that? Well, you go get the plate and you put the food on the plate and go get the silverware and to eat it. Every time you get ready to read a script, every time you get ready to eat something, read the scripture. See what that'll do for your faith. Pray. Read his word. See what that does for you. I thank you, brothers and sisters, for, for tuning in. Hopefully, you know, this word will help you to understand that 
it's important to exercise our faith, even more so that it's important to exercise our, our body. Because fleshly and bodily good, that's only going to be temporary. But when we do our faith, when we get our faith strong, that's going to be something that's going to be eternal. Because as we build our faith, we get closer to God, and our, and our deeds will show. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, at this time, I want to open up the doors of the church. Basically, what I'm stating is that give someone an opportunity out there that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Now is the time to go ahead and open up that door as he knocks on your heart. As we sit home in this pandemic and we think about all the things that we don't have, think about what you do have. You have a Savior that loves you. You have a Savior that wants to save you. If there's someone out there listening to, listening to this or there in the, within the sound of my voice, and, and you don't know Jesus as the partner of your sins, all you have to do is, is come to him. He will accept you. I mean, if he'll accept me, he'll accept anybody. And I'm here to tell you, he'll change your life. Let's pray. Eternal Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now that if there's someone out there right now listening to you knock on the door to their heart, they'll accept you, Father God. They'll, they'll, they'll accept you without any questions, Lord. Allow them to have the confidence to go ahead and accept you in their lives. We pray right now that if there's anyone that is doubting you right now, Lord, that you continue to touch them with your Holy Spirit. And we'll be ever careful to continue to praise you, give you all the honor, and never try to steal any part of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and God bless you.